everyone, I'm Sean. This is Hoon. And we are the Courageous Frights, back once again for another movie review. Yes. This actually, time, a series review, actually. Many movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> series of short film reviews. Yes. So, recently, last couple of weeks, like, I don't know, three, four weeks, something like that, we've been watching the VHS films. Yes, pretty so, much. We watched all the VHS films. I think the first three were on Tubi. Yeah, Tubi, they had them on for free on Tubi. So. Yeah, and then the last three were on Shudder. Shudder, which I think they're... I think the last three were actually made by Bloody Disgusting and Shudder. I think they were actually made by like Shudder or something. Yeah, I think so. I think starting with VHS 94, I think they yeah. said was kind of a reboot of the series. Yeah. So it was like under Shudder's control now because like viral which is the third movie in the series was not good <laughs> yeah we'll talk about each yeah. one a little bit. but yeah so this first vhs is just called vhs yes came out in 2012 so this yeah. series has been out for like 11 years yeah, 11 now. years but the way the the way the the short stories is on this is kind of like a weird uh weird thing they set up they basically have like an intermission in between each one of the short stories so they have like an overarching story yeah which is called a frame narrative yeah frame narrative so they have like each one will show one part of it and then they'll go to a, like them watching a videotape or something yeah and that's the videotapes over with they'll go to the next part like the like the next part of that frame narrative mm. which i think the first and second one are very similar to each other <laughs> it's literally like the same thing right yeah, so the the first one, VHS, came out in uh, 2012. Yes. And the directors for this one was Adam Wingard, who did Tape 56, which is the, the overarching narrative. Yeah, which is about, like, uh, it's about, like, this group of delinquents, I guess? I don't know. They're, like, just a group of people that... It's, like, it almost reminded me of, like, those jackass people or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, did kind of. Yeah, they film me, them doing, like, stupid stuff or, like, breaking people's, like, vehicles and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or, like, just when they were, like, filming themselves, like, harassing, like, basically sexually assaulting women and stuff. Yeah, they're a great, great bunch. Yeah, a great bunch to have, so... But then, I guess there was a part where they went to, uh... Like, they must got paid to go to some guy's house to, like, steal videotape from him. Yeah. Which I don't... Like, reading the synopsis, that's what it says. But I don't remember that part at all. I, like, no. I literally do not remember part, that part at all. Yeah, part of my problem with that is a lot of stuff just kind of happens. And yeah. you don't really know why things yeah. are happening. And you almost have to read the synopsis to figure out what's yeah. going to happen. We also, keep in mind, too, we probably watched this one three weeks ago. Yeah, so it, our memory might be a little hazy. <laughs> yeah, so some of the early stuff we watched a while ago. Yeah. A lot's happened since. Yeah, since so. that time, so. Yeah, so that's that's the very first thing. Adam Wingard's actually involved for a while. Like, yeah. He's in the second one, too. I think he's, like, he's like one of the main people that at least started this, like, series. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I think he was, like, with them and, like, uh... Who is it, like, David Bruckner is one that's, like... Well, he's, he's like still everything. involved, yeah. I think. And Radio Silence. Yeah, Radio Silence seems like being, like, a lot of the newer ones. Yeah, well, they were involved in the very first one. Yeah, that is true. So, David Bruckner did the first actual short, which is Amateur Night. Which was turned into a movie, Siren. Which I have, but yeah. I haven't watched it recently. <laughs> which I don't think... You didn't, I didn't, you didn't know that that was even come from this. No, thing. I didn't know it was even related yeah. to this when I got it. But this story is about... Our heroes, I guess. Oh, yeah, heroes. Our heroes. I guess they're trying to, like, videotape themselves, like, having sex with women or something? Basically, yeah, like, seducing women Yeah, super, seducing women in, like, a bar or something. Yeah. So they, the one guy has, like, glasses with the camera attached to it or mm -hmm. whatever. But then it kind of shows throughout their whole night or whatever. So the one lady he talks to is kind of like, it's obviously something's kind of like off with this one person they're with. Yeah, she's like very distant and stuff, but she seems interested in the guy, the, the quote unquote nice guy. Yeah, the nice of guy. Of the group. Yeah, he's like the guy that's just like, he doesn't want to do it anyways. He was just kind of like, yeah, he kind of got dragged into it. Yeah, he's like with his friends and they're just like, we gotta get you laid tonight or something. Yeah. And then he has sex with the bed for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> Like, just dry humps the bed post for some more reason. So, <laughs> I don't know. Good times. Yeah. It's Adam Wingard, so, or David so, Bruckner, or David whoever Parker, did this one. Yeah, this one's Bruckner, I think. Um, yeah, so basically, long story short, 
I yeah. guess spoiler warning for all these things if you actually care. Yeah. Uh, she's a succubus. Yeah, succubus. And then she basically kills everyone. She rips the one guy's dick off. Yes, which, if you're reading the synopsis on Wikipedia, there's a hyperlink yeah. dedicated to that. It literally says, ripping off his genitals <laughs> yes, exactly. is a hyperlink that takes you to a page for emasculation. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for that, Wikipedia. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so she kills everybody, and then she ends up flying away with the main guy. Yeah, because I think he, she likes him, but he, like, rejects her because she basically killed a lot of friends. And, like, yeah, else. but, I mean, they kind of had it coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, literally just, like, mutilates all her friends. So he's, like, trying to run away for his life, and he, like, rejects her. Yeah, but she's actually, like, looking for a mate or something. Yeah. Some, it, yeah, it's, so it's basically just a succubus. Yeah. And uh, that got turned into a movie. That was all right. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Like, the first one and second one, were they had some pretty good stuff in these first two ones. Yeah, I'd say they overall they were pretty solid. Yeah. So then the second one is by T-West, or Ty west Yes, which you know on the A24 films with his elevated horror. Elevated horror. Yeah, he did <laughs> Pearl Yeah, X. Pearl X is a big, his big movies that came out. Right. That series. But he did those after, I think. So this is Second Honeymoon. Yeah. So this tells a story of this newly married couple, Sam and Stephanie. Mm-hmm. And they're like kind of traveling, like a road trip kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. They end up staying at a motel. Which is, must be their honeymoon, because this is called Second Honeymoon, so I'm assuming it's their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, I guess. They must have had one before. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, they stay at this motel and like, He's he looks out the window and there's this weird girl like woman standing outside. Yeah, she knocks on the door or something. <laughs> yeah, and then they co- it goes over the course of like several nights and this woman sneaks into the hotel. Yeah, like repeatedly and takes a takes basically shows her like at nighttime with the camera and he's like fil- she's like filming them sleeping. Yeah, and then, and then he she takes his toothbrush and puts it in like the toilet or something. Puts his to- toothbrush in the toilet. Yeah. So, anyway, this happens over the course of several nights. Eventually, she gets, like, bolder each time. Yeah. And then she eventually ends up kind of killing him. Yeah, which... I've never seen Pearl or X, but I guess with Ty... I didn't really know... I don't really... I don't think I've ever really seen any Ty West's movies, but... Yeah. It's very realistic, I guess you could say. Well, it's elevated horror. Yeah, it's elevated horror, so... <laughs> like, it's... It looks like someone could break in, like, someone in real life could break in someone's apartment or whatever and just, like, right. and basically kill the guy or whatever. Yeah, so she kills him, and then the big plot twist is that Stephanie, the wife, was actually her lover. Yeah. So this was all, like, a setup the whole time. Yeah. And I guess she probably was sneaking into the house because of the motel because she probably gave her the key yeah, or something. Yeah, they let her get in there. Yeah. So, and this actually freaked me out a little bit shortly after we watched this, because I went to a horror film fest that yeah. weekend, yeah. and I stayed at a kind of shoddy rundown motel that <laughs> yeah. looked just like this one, yes. where the door didn't lock properly. Yes. <laughs> so you'll have a random person <laughs> filming you at night while you're sleeping. But, to make things alright, there was a random street light that was a strobe light. Right outside my window. There you go. That was going all night long. There you go. <laughs> so no one could sneak in without anyone noticing. Yes. And I also didn't get any sleep for two nights. Yes. <laughs> Moving on to <laughs> Tuesday the 17th. Which? By Glenn McQuaid. I know out of all these ones at this first movie batch, this one I thought was the worst out of all of them. Yeah, I don't even remember this one, to be honest. This has the Glitchman in it. Which oh. I, think we, I don't think it's called the Glitchman, but... <laughs> no, but I think they are called Glitchman. Is it actually called the Glitchman? People call them the Glitchman. Yeah, so this one's about, like, uh, I guess it's like a, bunch, a group of teenagers are going into, like, the middle of the woods. And this one lady's, like, talking some weird stuff. Is like, It's, like, basically teenager stuff. And he's, like... Then they, she leads them to the woods, into this lake in the middle of the woods somewhere. Yeah. And she's like, people died here before or something. Like, she, like, randomly says that. And the guy was like, why are you saying that? What are you, oh, what yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, she's, like, leading them there as yeah. a bait or something. Yeah, and her thing was, like, she's leading them there because I guess she survived from the Glitchman before. 
Yeah, she survived the Glitchman attack. And it's almost like using them as bait so she could try to kill the Glitchman. Yeah, whatever the Glitchman are. Yeah, which... <laughs> I think I think what they... Don't they explain it or something where the Glitchman is like the ghosts of people that died there or something? Maybe. At least, at least in the synopsis or something. So. That would make sense. Yeah, maybe in the synopsis they do. I don't know if they actually do in the show yeah, itself. Yeah, because she kills one of them. Because he makes that little trap, and she step, and the guy's like the go- the glitchman steps on it, and like goes in his eyeball, and then another one comes behind her and like kills her. Yeah, because there's a bunch of them, I think. Yeah, and then she becomes the glitchman. Yeah, then she becomes the glitchman at the end, and it's like okay. yeah, <laughs> it's it's very similar to Doom repercussions. Yeah, of Doom. pretty much. <laughs> no, John, you are the demon. <laughs> yeah, she becomes the demons. <laughs> but it's it's all right. It's not like the best. It's just, I think it was like the worst out of all of these. But right. It's just like, okay, I mean, it's kind of an interesting idea, I guess. I guess. But it's it's all right. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is the sick thing that happened to Emily when she was younger. Which, that one's my favorite one out of the, bu- the bunch here. Which, yeah. Okay, I remember this one. Yeah. So this one is basically like this guy who's kind of like a psychi- uh, psychologist mm-hmm. is having sort of like, Skype calls yeah. or something like that with his supposed girlfriend. Yeah. And she's having like some issues with paranoia and these similar issues and he's like trying to like talk her through it. Yeah. And she keeps having like, you know, people thinks people are in the home or like breaking into yeah, the house or something like, like that. Something voices, yeah. The guy's like, it's just the wind. <laughs> it's just the wind. Even though they literally just saw like a weird little kid or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that closed the door on him. But anyway, the big plot twist turns out it's aliens. Yeah, it's them aliens. <laughs> and they've like inseminated these women or yeah. this woman to use as like a surrogate for their young. Yeah. And the doctor, psychologist, whatever, is actually just in the other room. <laughs> yeah, like literally just in the other room. Yeah, and then he comes out and like removes the baby or whatever. It is like a C section yeah. or something. And he's like, How many times do you have to keep doing this? Because he's like in the league with the with the aliens. With the aliens, yeah. It's like how many times do you have to keep doing this? I've got to keep making up like reasons why this person's like hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty much like he's in with them. It's a whole big like conspiracy scam yeah. kind of thing and then it ends with him talking to a new woman yeah, a new so it's one. like basically this, saying the exact same thing continuing the same cycle yeah same cycle that she basically said with emily both a new lady yeah and then the the last major segment here is ten thirty one ninety eight. Yeah, which is also really good that would be my second favorite out of these ones yeah this one's from radio silence yeah who would later go on to do the Scream movies. Yeah, which... So which this I, is a pretty decent director. This must be, like, one of the first things they've done. Yeah, it's, like, real early when the yeah. group was... Because Radio Silence is, like, several people that work together as a team of directors. Yeah. And this was, like... They they, they made the company, like, in 2011, and then they did this in 2012. So. Yeah. And I think they stayed on as producers for a lot of these. Yeah, it seems like they would. If they're like a group of people, it's probably like, we might as well stay as a producer for this. <laughs> yeah, so this one's like a group of friends go to what they think is a haunted house. Yeah, we have a guy dressed up in a bear costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's reenacting uh, Nicolas Cage's performance in The Wicker yes. Man. Uh, so yeah, they go to this, what they think is a haunted house attraction, but it turns out that it's not. And it's actually, yeah. like, a regular house, and upstairs they're doing an exorcism. Yeah, because, you, like, you, while they're walking through the house, you see, like, like hands come through the walls. It's obviously, they put a lot of budget in this, so, like, hands come through the walls. And yeah, stuff, which is an them. effect from George Romero's, I think, Day of the Dead or something yeah. like that, his, like, third zombie movie. Mm-hmm. They have a scene very reminiscent of that. It's like a dream sequence yeah. or something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so this happens. There's a woman that they save in the house, but she turns out to be, like, a witch or something. Yeah, because, like, these guys are like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, and they, they bungle their way upstairs and, like, stumble into the middle of an exorcism or ruin everything. Yeah, because they're like, we need to save this girl. They're trying to kill her. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, everybody gets killed, basically. Yeah, because they basically when they're running away, like... Things are happening behind them. <laughs> Don't they end up stuck in, like, train tracks or something? Yeah, because... Like, hit by a train or Yeah, because at the very know? end... They're driving down. They're trying to run away from the this house because they yeah. the guys like those guys are chasing after him, and then the, the car stops on like train track, 
and then the, the lady disappears. Yeah. And then she's, like, right in front of him outside the car, and she, like, looks at him, walks away while the train's coming. They're trying to open the door, but they can't because it's, yeah. like, it's, like, locked or something. Yeah, so that's it for VHS. Um, yeah, so which one was your favorite one again? My favorite was uh, the long title one. <laughs> the, the thing the long that happened one. to Emily from... Like, when she was younger. Yeah, when she was younger, that one. It's a weird title. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, there's no time lapse. So. Yeah. Why is it when she and was younger? It's almost like they hint that she's dead anyways at the end. So it's like... Yeah, it's, that's weird. But yeah, that was pretty good. I think my favorite might be that last one. Yeah. The Radio Silence one. That was really good, too. So, least favorite. Least favorite with Tuesday 17th. Yeah, sure. the Glitchman. Yeah, the Glitchman. Just, <laughs> it was not... <laughs> Oh, they're all they're also definitely trying to do a Friday thirteenth kind of yeah. thing there, but it doesn't really work. You no. Know, it's like like when you're awake type of thing and it's like get turned into these zombie things. It's like eh. It's not, you turn it's into right. the glitchmans. Yeah, it's alright. Alright, so that's it for VHS, and then we're gonna cover VHS two. VHS two, which the frame narrative narrative on this one is very similar to the first one. But this one you're almost falling like a private investigator. Mm-hmm. And he must have got hired to do something, and then he had to go to his house. I don't know why they went to this house <laughs> for some weird reason. And then it's like set up the exact same way as the first one, where there's like a wall of TVs and they have like a VHS player, and a guy just like put like feeding in VHS tapes while watching whatever's on him. Yeah. So that's the frame narrative one, which is like it's all right. It's it's kind of generic. Yeah, I don't think any of the frame narratives are particularly amazing. No. I think the la- the best one, I think, was definitely VHS 6, the newest one. 85. Yeah, 85. Yeah. Or 86, or whatever the movie's called. <laughs> whatever it's called. We'll get to it when we get yeah. to it. So, the first segment... Yeah, so the tape 49, I think, is the overarching thing. Yeah. That's Simon Barrett did that. Um... Phase one clinical trials. Yeah, this, this is Adam is Wingard. Adam Wingard. So this guy, Adam Wingard's character, gets a like an implant in his eye. Yeah. Because it was like damaged in an accident or something. Yeah. And he starts seeing these like weird glitches. They're like almost like ghosts or yeah, something. Yeah, they I think they say they're glitches or something, but he's like it's I the, see them everywhere. It's the glitchman. Again. Yeah, the glitchman again. They're back. But, uh, yeah, they're, like, weird, uh, like, ghosts or demons or something. Yeah, because you have, like, a, a ghost girl, like, some, like, fat guy. Yeah. And then, like, a, another guy is there. And some other, some other chicks, like, there who also sees them. Yeah, but I think she, like, has, like, a cochlear implant or something. Okay. That was, like, her thing was hearing them. Okay, so she can hear them. Hear them, but also see them. Yeah, so they kind of work together to try to stop them, to understand them or something. Yeah. And then they attack, and those two have sex for some reason. Yeah, she said that if you have sex, it go away. <laughs> but they <laughs> don't, though. Yeah, they're there still. And then they end up dying anyway. Like, like I think the next morning or something, she gets, like, drowned, drowned. in the pool, yeah. And then he dies. Then he dies, because he's, like, in the uh, in the bathroom. Because it's, like, the, literally the scene, the way the scene's set up is his bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, like, the, is it? like, pool area, and that's, like, yeah. the three areas we're at this whole time. He always goes to the bathroom when those ghosts show up. Yeah. So he basically tries to rip out the cochlear implant, or, like, the, whatever, the ocular, ocular implant. implant, so they can't, like, basically get rid of his eyeball or something. Right. But then the ghosts come in and basically take his eyeball and put the eye down his throat and he dies. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's... Yeah, it's yeah. very much, if you've seen the eye... Yeah. It's kind of like a crappy version of the eye. Yeah, it's pretty much that. <laughs> it's literally an, the eye. The eye is much better, though. Yeah, it's just kind of like a, if they had two times, like... And by the eye, I mean the, the Hong Kong Thai version. Yeah. Not the Jessica Alba one. Yeah. Although I've never actually seen the remake, I so I can't... I that was actually supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, I can't say for sure yeah. if it's good or not. I've seen the original. I've seen, like, the eye... Like, one, two, and three, I think. Yes. But I haven't seen the remake. But they're much better than this. Yeah. All right, so then the next one is... is actually my favorite out of this group of movies, which is uh, 
a ride in the park. A ride in the park, which is basically a guy. He's like he's like on a bicycle, going down yeah. this trail. And he's talking to his wife or something like that. And then you see like these this lady come up to him, and kind of like has like has been bitten. Mm-hmm. And then like a couple of different like zombies basically showing up. And then he basically fights him off, and then he goes to basically see how the lady's doing. Yeah. But then she bites him, and then he kills her. Mm-hmm. And then he's like coughing up blood and like stuff, and then he just passes like basically goes falls down, and the whole thing is him with as basically a zombie, yeah, <laughs> walking through the woods, doing zombie things. Yeah, but it. it's like from the point of view of the zombie. Yeah, he's wearing like his go cam or whatever. Yeah, and then I think at the end he shoots himself or something. Yeah, because. I think he sees a lady... Something happened and it caused him to regain his humanity. Yeah, because he sees a lady like trying to protect this guy or something like that that's like on the ground. Mm-hmm. And then the phone, his phone rings and it's like his girlfriend or something. Because he thought he'd get... Oh, yeah, there. that's right. And then he looks at the lady and then looks at the phone and then kind of remembers. And then he... I think he sees himself in like the mirror, like a mirror of a car. Yeah. Because he gets run over. Yeah, he sees that he's a zombie or something. Yeah, because he sees, like, he goes to like a birthday party, like in the middle of the woods or something. Oh, yeah, I remember that. We made fun of him because we were just watching Lonely Island. Yeah, pretty much. Happy birthday to the crowd. (laughs) Happy birthday to the crowd. Yeah, pretty much. So he gets run over by this this vehicle. Then he sees, like, this happening, and then he's like, I'm a zombie. Mm -hmm. And then there's a guy with a shotgun that also got. Either attacked or killed or something. Yeah, I think he shot some of the people first. Yeah, and then, and then, get... then the then he gets killed. Then he gets this grabs a shotgun and basically shoots himself. And the GoPro cam's like flying in the air. Oh yeah, and it just apparently like around. blew his whole head off. Yeah. Or, or somehow. So that was directed by Eduardo Sanchez and Greg Hale. Which I actually I like this one just because I don't think I've ever seen a, mo- a movie where you're at the point of view of a zombie. Yeah, I'm sure it's been done, but yeah. I don't. Re- I can't remember. Yeah. It. If there's been one. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's kind of, at least to me, it's unique, but it, there probably, it probably has been done before, but. Yeah, it's still cool. I yeah. mean, that's basically kind of the point of watching these short films is to see, like, new ideas, yeah. like, fresh takes on either familiar stories or stories you've never seen before. Yeah. A lot of it's about what kind of, like, camera techniques can we do, yeah. what kind of, like, story beat ideas we have. Like that Especially kind of with using the budget they had, because these movies did not have a very big budget. No, nah, I think the first one was, like, 82000 total yeah. for everything. So, it's like they can do a lot with the budgets they have, I guess. Yeah. Obviously, there are some of these have better better budgets than others. Yeah. <laughs> like, what we're going to talk about, Yeah, the possibly. next one after this one. So, the next one is Safe Haven which is directed by Timo Jajanto. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Uh, and Gareth Evans. Yes. Uh, Gareth Evans, uh, martial arts fans will know well. He's the guy that directed The Raid mm-hmm. and uh, those films. So these are both Indonesian. This is an Indonesian film. Mm-hmm. And this is about like a film crew that goes to some cult leader's compound to interview him. Yeah. It's called like Paradise Gates or something. Yeah. It's sort of like, um, we've had a couple like this in the US too. These like yeah. massive cult groups or whatever. It's like the, what's that one? It was like the guys that like. Heaven's Gate or something like yeah. that. Yeah. There, there was a couple. Waco, Texas was a big one. I don't that know, was another one. Yeah. yeah. I don't know the name of the group but <laughs> yeah so similar to that it's this big compound everybody's drinking the kool-aid basically yeah. um but then what happens is it turns out that the cult is actually kind of real yeah <laughs> and everybody turns into like a demon yeah and it almost turns into doom at the end yeah because like they shoot themselves in the head and stuff yeah they all kill themselves and then get like resurrected as demons yeah and it's like definitely had either a higher budget yeah or they the directors like are more competent yeah. with what they can do with the budget or something. Like, like the lighting was really good. Yeah. And the videography was really good in this. Yeah, and they were like trying to take the one woman's pregnant. Yeah. And they're like trying to I think she cheated on her boyfriend or husband or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they kept saying that she is the seed of whatever. The seed of Chucky. Yeah, it's the seed of Chucky. <laughs> she uh they want to take the baby. Yeah, basically, because basically, she was already pregnant. Yeah. So she pretty much gives birth to, like, an actual full-on doom yeah. demon. Yeah. Like a cyber demon. Yeah. It's it's pretty wild. But the one guy that's still alive at the end is, like, 
that was a guy who gave, made her pregnant in the mm-hmm. first place. Yeah. So, like, the demon, I don't think, actually kills him because he's like, thinks he's, like, his dad or something. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> like, recognize him as his father Yeah, or which something. it kind of makes sense because it's, like, him. <laughs> yeah. But that is a, that, that one is good. Yeah, that was pretty good. It was, like, a weird, uh, like, almost, like, Beast Man. What's that one guy? It's, like, Baphomet or yeah, something. Yeah, Baphomet, I think, is what it's supposed to be. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So, that one, yeah, I think that one's my favorite yeah. one. Yeah. And then there's Slumber Party Alien Abduction. Which is, they made a full a feature-length movie of this called Kids vs. Aliens. Yes, that's a Shudder film, I yeah. think. So this one's about, like, there's, like, a, they put a camera on a dog, which is, like, the whole thing is the, the camera is on the dog's head. Yeah. You know, it's from the point of view of the dog. Right, which so, is, so that's kind of different. Yeah, it's a lot different. So these kids are, like, like their parents are going somewhere. So, like, the kid, like, I guess calls, like, some of his friends that come over. Yeah. And they basically have a slumber party. And they have, like, the, I guess, a sister with their boyfriend or whatever. They kind of mess with each other. And at night, you see, like, these lights in the back, like, like flashing outside their windows and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's, like, a big light over at the, like, the lake that they're next to. Mm Mm-hmm. And then this is when the aliens start showing up because you see, like, these movements everywhere. And then the one kid gets, like, taken. <laughs> yeah. So it ends up basically being, like, a home invasion alien abduction film. Yeah. Sort of in a way, like, that movie that's on Hulu right now yeah. that people keep talking about. Yeah. Like, no one will save you or something. Yeah. But this is, like, if they had kids and, like... Yeah. A lot of strobe lights because it's pretty much... It's like... Yeah, it's like my motel room. Yeah. There's strobe light outside. <laughs> Because this one, it's from the point of view of the dog, so the dog is running around everywhere, and his aliens are, like, obviously guys in, I don't know if there were guys in suits, or I don't know, it was kind of hard to tell, because it was very oh, dark. I'm, I'm sure it probably was guys in, like, gray alien Yeah, gray alien or... suits, they're, like, a little bit taller or whatever. Yeah. So there's Almost basically like signs aliens. Yeah. <laughs> like, the police, I think, show up, because they saw the lights, too, but then they get, like, attacked by these monsters, and they have a lot of fog effects and stuff. It... Like, if you're watching this as, like, a, someone that's being a film maker or something like yeah. that, this is probably a good movie to show, this, to use, like, with a limited budget, with lighting, and also fog effects. So they had a lot of fog effects in here. Right. Well, I mean, there's a reason why this got turned into a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is probably the most ambitious one, with the possible exception of the Indonesian one. Yeah. All right, so what was your favorite of VHS 2? My favorite was uh, A Ride in the Park. Right in the park. With the zombies, so. Yeah, my favorite's probably Safe Haven, the yes. Indonesian one. And the least favorite... Phase 1 clinical trial was mine. Yeah, same. Yeah, because it was... That one was just kind of like... I've seen it before. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's basically yeah. the eye, pretty yeah. much. So... Which VHS 2 was like... Like I say, they weren't like they were all pretty good. It's not like probably very minuscule differences, but no, yeah, even the Adam Wingard one's not bad. Yeah, so yeah, none of them are bad. I I don't think there's really a terrible VHS segment so far. Yeah, we'll get to one here coming up. We might get to a couple coming up. Yeah. So then the third one is VHS viral. Yes, and the frame narrative on this one, which I don't even remember what the frame vicious is. circles. This is the one with the ice cream truck driver. Oh, yeah. Some crap. I think it's supposed to be a commentary on, like, viral... Pe- people do those viral videos all the time. Johnny Somali. Yeah, Johnny Somali. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, throughout the whole thing... Because this is, like... This one had a one a video that they cut from their last minute. So, almost like the, the frame narrative was one video... Like, one movie that was in here. Yeah. So... Like, it shows some guy, and he's, like, filming his girlfriend or something like that. Also, why... How did the films... Because the other one, they were all watching VHS tapes. Yeah. This one wasn't. What... I can't even remember how it transitioned into the segments, or did it? That his segments just randomly started playing. I think it randomly started playing, because it was, like... You would have something that happened... Like, the first one was he's... The guy's filming this his girlfriend all the time. She tells him to stop all the time. Yeah. And then, like, they're watching television, mm. and then they were like, oh, there's it's coming by our house. Let me go outside and film this. Oh, yeah, because it's like a police chase. Yeah, it's a police chase. And then the one ambulance goes by, 
And then it turns around and it comes back around while his girlfriend walks in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. And then his girlfriend disappears and he's like, where'd she go? Oh. And then he's like, wait, it must be in that ice cream truck. Let me go chase it down. And And he pretty much spends the rest of the movie chasing the ice cream truck. Yeah, the rest of the thing is him chasing this ice cream truck around. Mm -hmm. But then he also realizes that it's been going around in circles. Yeah. And people are getting, like, captured from this thing. Like, it's been just capturing people for some reason. Somehow. But I think that, I think it shows, like, I think they're watching videos on their phone. Yeah. And I think that's what it starts. Like, they're watching these videos on the phone, and it oh, starts. Oh, okay. If yeah, I remember it's like correctly. causing people to be crazy or something. Yeah, because, like, the one, there's one scene where the, some guy's, like, trying to get a picture of, like, the video of this ice cream truck, but then he fall off a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> or another one where, the, like, it must be, like, some, like, a gang member getting out of prison. And then they think it's, like, a bunch of police officers are coming to, like, raid their house, but it's actually them filming this ice cream truck just driving by their house, and they're, like, shooting each other. Yeah, it's very It's bizarre. It's really, it's really strange. All right, so that's the framing narrative, but then the first actual segment is Dante the Great, directed and written by Greg Bishop. Yes. So this one is about a magician, illusionist, mm. what have you. And he owns a cloak that was supposed to have been owned by Harry Houdini. Yeah. And essentially... And then he has an assistant, this woman who's trying to find out his secrets to become a magician herself. But she discovers over time that he doesn't have any secrets. His secret is that the cloak actually is magic. Yeah, because I think what he likes to do is... He actually videotapes, like, every interaction he's had. Yeah. Yeah. And he videotapes him of him killing, like, victims. Like, it's like his protégés, I guess. Yeah. Because they'll just, like, disappear or something. And, then, like, right. the police are trying to find him. Yeah. And it's like... But he films that, like, the cloak is, like, eating these people or something. Yeah, it's like the cloak does all the magic, but in turn, it's, like, some kind of demonic entity or something yeah. that, like, needs to feed on souls or people's blood yeah. or something. Yeah, or it like doesn't, that. like, it, or it takes your own life force or something. It's kind of... Yeah. I think that's what it's supposed to do. And in the end, it's a big like magician battle between the woman and the yeah and the main really bad cgi with terrible cgi however the concept of it is kind of cool i like the concept it's basically evil dr strange yeah (laughs) if if dr strange's like cloak gave him his powers gave him his powers and also ate people yeah because i think i think the one lady she she grabs a cloak and kills him or does he get eaten a lot i don't remember how he dies I think he gets eaten by the cloak. Yeah, or he something. gets eaten by the cloak or something. And then she tries to burn the cloak because she wants to get rid of it. And the very last scene is her on the computer, and then the door like opens in her closet, and the cloak's like there. <laughs> yeah. And then it basically grabs her and kills her. Yeah. And it's like or okay. takes her over or something yeah, like it's, that. It's it's not like it's good. I like the, concept. the concept is cool, but like the the execution is not, is not great. There's also a part where like a SWAT team comes in and gets killed or something. Yeah, that's where you see the bad CGI. Because there's one scene where I don't know Dante he grabs he like rips his chest apart and this is like obviously bad CGI yeah. rib cage and it's like oof. right. This looks horrible. <laughs> yeah, but they tried. Yeah, they tried. <laughs> And then the next segment is Parallel Monsters. Which is probably my favorite out of all these. Yes, this was uh, directed and written by Nacho Villalondo. And it's a Spanish film. Yeah. And it's about Alfonso, who's this inventor. He basically creates a portal between worlds. Yeah. Opens up to a parallel universe. Yeah. And then him and Parallel Alfonso, I guess this is also his name. Yes. They appear to be identical. Their worlds look exactly the same yeah. at first glance. So they decide to trade spa- trade places for like 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, he's like, come back here in 15 minutes. Yeah. So they go into the world, and the, the regular Alfonso goes and meets the, his wife, who's the same person. Yeah. And it's like slightly different, because she's like wearing like... Almost like seductive clothing. And stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, there's different, slight differences, but it's yeah. like the same people. And there's these strange people in their house. Yeah. Because they're setting up, like, some kind of weird ritual, like, orgy thing. Yeah, because I think when he's walking up the stairs, there's, like, a picture of, like, almost like a satanic ritual. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> but when he walks up his, like, in his timeline, like, the the parallel universe, Alfonso, he sees, like, a picture of his family. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, an old picture of his family. Right. 
So it turns out that what he ended up doing was at first glance, the universes are the same, but in reality, it's satanic universe or yeah, something. Yeah, his, like, is, like, yeah, his, like, in the satanic universe, and he's, like, in the normal, like... Yeah, like, there's a zeppelin universe. that flies over with, like, an upside-down cross yeah. on it, and they're all just, like, blaring sirens outside and yeah. stuff, and, and they're the doing whole... some weird orgy ritual. Guy pulls down his pants, and they have, like, dick monsters. Yeah, dick monsters. <laughs> and then he just takes, a like, a fork or something and stabs him in the... And dick is monster dick and yeah. then uh the wife shows up later on and she's got like a giant vagina mouth yeah because she's like if you wanted to be with them by yourself he just says something and then he just punches her in the yeah face. yeah <laughs> he just punches her in the face and runs back down so they trade places the 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 alfonso from the weird satanic universe runs in and then she devours him yeah thinking because I it's think... the other one i think yeah, because I think what, like, he goes up to, her, like, the other Alfonso, not the parallel universe one, but the other one, he goes up, he goes up to, like, his bedroom. Yeah. And he was, like, wants to, like, have sex with his wife or something. Yeah, so satanic Alfonso goes up and, like, basically attacks the regular Alfonso's with wife with his monster dick. <laughs> yeah. And then she freaks out, and then when the real Alfonso comes back, she thinks... That's, that's the still, evil yeah, one. Yeah, the evil one. So she stabs him, like, to death with a knife or something. Yeah, because it's that's that's like the parallel universe, because he dies that way, but the other Alfonso dies because he gets his face put in his vagina mouth. Yeah, he gets eaten wife. by vagina mouth wife. Because vagina mouth wife is like, <laughs> there's something about domestic violence or something. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. So the laws against domestic violence in that world. Yes. <laughs> so just rip your face off, I guess. Right. They're they're more about equality and satanic. Yeah, yeah. So they um yeah, so essentially both Alfonsos get killed by their wives, probably through misunderstandings. Yeah. It was like situation. So it's kind of interesting. Because he's like locked in his bed he like locked in his like laboratory. He never talks to what's going at going on. He's just like, oh right. let's do this. So Yeah, so that one was pretty interesting. Yeah, that had a pretty good concept. I do like the concept on that. Actually, it was, it was pretty good executed, too. That was really good. Yeah, it's parallel universe type yeah, so concept. That's, uh, probably, I'm assuming yours is probably your favorite one. Is this I one? think so. I think that was my favorite. Yeah, because that's also my favorite one. We're there were gonna... not too many choices in this one, because Viral didn't have as many choices as the other ones. Yes. So then we're going to go to, actually, our true favorite film. Yes. Justin Benson and Aaron Scott Moorhead's Bone Storm. Oh, gosh. So this one is about a bunch of douchebags yeah. who uh, live in Los Angeles, I guess. They're like skateboarders. Yeah, they're like juvenile delinquents. So then they go down to try to, I don't know, film a snuff film or some crap in like Tijuana. Yeah, I think what they were they were doing like a bunch of video, like viral videos again. Yeah. Of them like skateboarding. Yeah. And I don't know why they went down south, to be honest. I can't remember. I don't know what the hell they're doing. They went down to, like, to go to Mexico to, like, drink beer or something. And then he went to that guy's, like, fireworks, fact, like, room, or, like, fireworks store. And then put Yeah, they do just do there. a bunch of nonsense. And then yeah. they end up in a storm sewer. Which kind of looks like a skating rink. Storm drain thing that's sort of built, like, yeah, sort of built like a half pipe type yeah. thing. And there's a ritual going on there. And they basically, some guy summons, like, a bunch of weird demon, like, skeleton men. Yeah. And the rest of the thing is just them fighting skeleton men. Yeah, for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah. But the one guy got gets killed. Uh, and, well, half of them get killed. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of them get killed fighting the skeletons, but, like, our main protagonists, like, don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care that it's all like their buddies just die. Yeah. <laughs> It's like their friend, they don't even care, just like they're running away. They don't care. The camera angle keeps cutting to like their faces while yeah. they're skateboarding and it looks and really bizarre. While they're fighting and it's while just they're like... fighting and the camera's just like up their nose yeah, while they're fighting. Not... It reminds me of those weird like GoPro cam things. Yeah. Sometimes you see it on like TikTok or Instagram or something, and it makes their head like all elongated yeah. and weird looking. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of that. Like it's almost comically bad. Yeah. It's it's not good. I mean so it's basically like Tony Hawk's pro cultist. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Except if Tony Hawk was a douchebag kid. Yeah. Fighting fighting me Mexican cultists. skeletons. Yeah, yeah Mexican cult skeleton guy, which 
it was weird because they started off as like guys with like face paint, and yeah. then it slowly turned into like skeleton men. Yeah, which I don't understand. It turned why into that like happened. army of darkness. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. No, it's just whatever the budget provided. Yeah, they probably spent their budget later on. They were like, no one's gonna notice. Yeah. But at the very end, it does show, like, a demon thing come out of the storm drain, though. But it's kind of, like, freak a little bit. I think the idea is that when they killed them... Every time they killed them, they became more, like, undead or oh, something. Oh, okay, that might have been it. Because they had to kill them multiple... Like, over and over again. They kept getting back up. Yeah, because I think the one time he... The guy takes a skateboard and, like, hits the guy in the face a couple times. Yeah. And while he's trying to run away, he has, like, a piece of flesh in his wheel yeah. and he's taken off. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, stupid because they're fighting these skeleton men, but they're still on their skateboards. Like, nobody just puts the skateboard down and runs. Yeah, I know. They're just fighting them. They're just fighting them while doing tr- cool tricks. Yeah, and it's it's not good. It's it's really dumb. So, the next one, I think that was it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it, and then it goes to, like, the viral video, which shows... Yeah, because the vicious circles thing is basically, goes on forever. Yeah, it's a it's a while. It takes a while. I don't know. It feels like it takes a while. I don't know if it actually did, but oh, it definitely. Did. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was another one that wasn't included. Yeah, because I think they said it was not found footage enough. Okay. Which this whole section wasn't found footage. It was like just yeah. Videos. It was almost like they said it didn't fit the narrative, but there isn't a narrative. Yeah, there isn't a narrative. So that was Todd Lincoln's Gorgeous Vortex. We can't talk about it because we watched this on Shutter and it wasn't included yeah. in the whole thing. It's not have, anything I We saw. don't have the Blu-ray or the, the 4K right. disc. So once watch. again, another plug for physical media. Because yeah. <laughs> yes, I, exactly. I don't even know where you find this unless it's just on like YouTube or something. Yeah. But it's included as an extra in the DVD and Blu-ray, but we don't have that. Yes. So that's viral. My personal favorite was the Spanish one. That's same here. The, uh, what was it called? Parallel, Parallel Monsters. Monsters. Oh, yeah. Parallel Monsters. And then the least favorite was the stupid Bone, bone Storm. Storm. Yeah, yeah Bone Daddy like, Mexico. Yeah, it was like stupid. It was dumb. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. Be sure to stay tuned for part two where we conclude with the last three VHS entries in the series. See you then.